Hi Southway children, this week my assembly is on Jane Goodall, someone who I admire for her work with nature and her passion for environmental activism. So here's a fact file for you. Her name is Dr Jane Morris Goodall. She was born on the 3rd of April 1934, so before um, the Second World War. She's a primatologist um, who is someone who studies non-human primates such as monkeys, lemurs and gorillas. She's a conservationist, that means she really cares about the environment and she tries to keep it as sort of healthy as she possibly can. And she's a campaigner, so someone who really fights for what they believe in. She does lots of speak, uh, speaking and talking at different um, events like the UN convention. She's known for being the first person to study chimps in the wild. And she found out that chimpanzees have emotions, they use tools and they eat meat. She says, I was 10 when I decided I want to go to Africa and live with wild animals and write books about them. That's about 70 years ago now. And back then, girls in England didn't have those opportunities. So everybody laughed at me and said, Jane, dream about something you can achieve. But my mother said, if you really want something, you're going to have to work hard. Take advantage of every opportunity and never give up. Jane loved to draw animals when she was a child. She even started her own club called the Alligator Club, where she used to lead drawing lessons. And here are some of her drawings over here. I'm going to read you a story about her now called The Watcher. Jane Goodall's life with chimps. So it's about her life and how she got to where she is now. Jane, Jane, where are you? Jane, can you hear me? Everyone had been searching for hours and hours, looking for little Valerie Jane Goodall. Then, from the hen house, Jane came running to her mother, shouting, I know how an egg comes out! At five years old, Jane was already a watcher. Jane watched all the animals in her world, big and small. Earthworms, insects, birds, cats, dogs and horses. Jane quietly watched an English robin at her window for days and weeks. She saw him come close, closer, then into her room to eat some crumbs off her bed. Then, when spring came, the robin even built a nest in Jane's bookcase. Perched high in her favourite beech tree, Jane read about Dr Doolittle talking to the animals and Tarzan living with the apes in Africa. She wanted to go to Africa too and talk to the animals and live with the apes. When Jane's school days were over, she worked and saved to buy a ticket to Kenya. She hid her earnings under the parlour rug for safekeeping. Crossing the ocean, Jane stayed on deck and watched the waves, even when the cold wind blew. She saw all the different blues and greens of the sea and fish that glowed through the dark water. As Jane stepped onto dry land, she closed her eyes in joy. Jane looked for work with animals. A famous scientist, Louis Leakey, was looking for someone to watch and study chimpanzees to help us understand the animals most like us. Would Jane be interested? Yes, she would. Jane travelled to a place in Tanzania where the chimps lived, Thombi. I wanted to learn things no one else knew, uncover secrets, she wrote. She set up camp far from any human dwelling. The first night, Jane lay awake listening to new sounds. The croak of a frog, the hum of crickets, the laugh of a hyena, the hoot of an owl, and looking up at the stars, she knew she was home. At dawn, Jane walked into the forest. Up high, she found a peak to watch from. Every day, she climbed to the peak to look for chimps. But though she could hear their pant hoot calls to one another, she didn't see them. Jane walked down into the forest hoping a chimp would appear. 
Still, the cautious chimps stayed hidden. Secretly, they watched Jane. When will I see a chimp? she wondered. Then, Jane is fell ill with malaria. Lying in her tent, burning with fever, she almost lost hope. But when the fever left her body, she tried again, to get close to the chimps. More weeks and months passed, till one day, the chimps let Jane see them. She stayed in the background, never hid, acted uninterested, and quietly watched. Now Jane watched every day, all day, even huddled in the rain. She saw that chimps accepted the rain, not look for shelter, as we do, and she kept notes about it all. You have to be patient if you want to learn about animals, she wrote. Some nights, Jane even slept on the peak to be near the tree where the chimps were sleeping. She woke at dawn and saw them, saw them slowly rise from their nests sit for a spell, then go off to find food. Jane also named the chimps. To her, each one was different, just like us. A grey-bearded chimp was the first to approach Jane. She named him David Greybeard. David Greybeard has, yes, he has taken bananas from my hand. So gentle, no snatching, she wrote. David Greybeard let Jane come close. She watched him shape a stick into a tool to dig for termites. Before this, nobody knew that wild animals made tools. She watched David Greybeard eat meat. Before this, everybody thought chimps ate only plants. And because David Greybeard trusted Jane, now the other chimps let Jane come close too. Chimps all around me, what a day. Chimps near, chimps far, old men, young men, ladies, children, babies, teenagers, the lot, she wrote. Jane watched the chimps when they were happy. She saw them hold hands and hug and kiss and laugh, just like us. She watched the chimps when they were angry or scared and their hair stood on end. She saw the chimps swagger and throw tantrums and kept out of the way. Jane watched the chimps at the Kokombi waterfall, leaping and swinging in awe and wonder of the tumbling water. At night, after a supper of beans and tomatoes and onions, Jane listened to Mozart and Bach as she wrote up her notes from the day. Years of notes were piled high everywhere. Jane needed help. And so assistants came to watch and write. One day, Jane sadly left Gombe. All across Africa, forests were being cut down and the chimps were losing their homes. Poachers were shooting grown chimps and kidnapping their babies to sell to laboratories, to the circus and as pets. Jane's beloved chimpanzees were in danger of becoming extinct. They needed Jane to speak for them. Jane hated to leave her friends, but she knew she must. She travelled to big cities and small towns the world over, month after month, year after year, asking for help to save the chimps and the forest. Jane returned to the forest of Gombe whenever she could. She climbed up to the peak, calling, hello, to the streams and hills and trees, David Greybeard at her side. Jane watched and listened again to the pants hoot calls of her friends. And when she went back to civilization to speak out for the chimps, Jane carried with her the peace of the forest. The forest in Gombe, where she talked to the animals like Dr. Doolittle and walked unafraid like Tarzan and watched and wrote and opened a window for us to the world of the chimpanzees. I studied animals differently from other people. 
While I was in Gombe, Tanzania in the 1960s, other scientists told me I'd done my whole study of chimpanzees wrong, that I shouldn't have given the chimps names, and that they should have been numbered, because that's scientific. I was told I couldn't talk about their personalities, minds or emotions, because they thought those things were unique just to humans. But luckily, I'd learnt from my dog as a child that that was nonsense. Helping people to understand, thanks to the chimps, that humans are part of the animal kingdom, not separate from it. When I started out, nobody else was studying chimps in the wild, so I was able to show how their behaviour is like ours. Kissing, cuddling, holding hands, patting one another, reassurance, even warfare. In 1960, a young British woman ventured into the forests of Africa to follow her childhood dream, to find a way to watch free wild animals living their own undisturbed lives. She left everything familiar behind and ended up giving the world a remarkable window into our closest living relatives. She was me. I wanted to come as close to understanding animals as I possibly could. We are continuing our research at Gombe. It's the longest running study of any non-human animal. And we're using some exciting new technology to learn more about chimpanzee ranging patterns and the state of the forest. And this helps to inform decision makers on action to be taken to protect chimpanzees, their habitats, and the other creatures that live there. As well as Jane's other amazing achievements with her chimpanzee research, she is also the founder of two organisations that help young people learn about animals and the environment in order to educate the next generation about the importance of looking after our planet. As a messenger of peace since 2002, she continues to help the United Nations focus attention on environmental issues. She advises them on the best ways to move forward in an environmentally friendly way and help make changes to environmental policy. Last year, Jane Goodall met Greta Thunberg, who were honoured to meet each other. They discussed the environment, what changes must be made and how we can all help to make a difference. She says, I see reason to be optimistic. Nature is resilient. If we work to restore those places that we have destroyed, if we give them time, they will recover. A bleak, destroyed area can become beautiful again as the insects and birds and other animals come back. Animals on the very brink of extinction can be given another chance. I truly believe we have a window of time during which we can begin to heal some of the damage we have inflicted and at least slow down the climate crisis, but we have to act now. My greatest hope is our young people. There's a saying, we haven't inherited this planet from our parents, We've borrowed it from our children. I really hope learning about Jane Goodall has inspired you and you've learned something new. Um, and don't forget, Jane Goodall saved after she left school. She saved up money. Then she went to Kenya before she had a degree, before she had many qualifications, because she believed she could do it. She just was really passionate and she followed her dream. And it was later that she went to university. I'm going to leave you with this quote um, because I think it's something that we could all kind of take with us um, and think about. What you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make.